What's up to all my Succession fans out there? Elliot here from Movie Files, back with our discussion on the latest episode of Succession. I'm currently live. Uh, we have a good time, so join us one of these Sundays. I'm going to leave the link to the full live version of this breakdown in the description of this video. But right now, we're breaking down episode five titled Kill This. Man, what an exciting episode. I'm talking, I said it uh, when we start this video in the live stream. Alexander Skarsgård, he is a force of nature. He's not hes not this guy, you know, uh, over here. He's not quite to the Logan stature of, like, the villainous uh, aspect, but he brings this intensity and this gravitas in this mean nature to the show that I just love, and I had a good time with him tonight, and we'll talk about his affairs and blood sending off to his ex-girlfriend, some messy, messy stuff there, but the shiv, all of it all. Shiv the little puppet master behind the scene. I'm loving it. We will be talking about that and Rome and Ken leaving her out of the dark and making deals without her. Speaking of Rome, if you watched my breakdown last week, I knew the pre-grieving Rome, oh, I'm okay. I knew it was going to come out eventually. And it came out at the kind of a wrong time. And we'll get to that kill list. We, we um, got to say goodbye to some characters uh, that we'll get to tonight. But hey, before we get into the discussion, hit the thumbs up, share, leave your thoughts in the comments. Who was your MVP of the night? What was your favorite moment? Your funniest line? Go ahead and put that in the comments and let's have a discussion in the comments below. So with all that being said, let's get into the breakdown. Y'all know who my boy is, and that is Kenny Ken Ken. And I love this opening scene because it's such a great callback to season one, episode one. I can't remember the song he was listening to in season one, episode one, but I do know Hove. <laughs> I do know Hove was in the car and it's a takeover, baby. I love that callback because this is the Ken that I rock with. Uh, you know, sad puppy tear eyed Ken in his feelings. Ken is a character. Sure, it brings some dynamic nature to the character. We get into his head when he's in a bad space, but I like when Ken is rocking and rolling and taking things over, y'all. So I love this swagger that he's coming off with as we open the episode because it brings me back to those earlier days. And like I said, when Ken is in control, when Ken isn't relying on drugs and alcohol and having his dad beat him up every single day, and when he's focused, he can be that killer. We talked about it last week with that decision about using the bad news and having that be out there to the press. He has it in him, but now he's really starting to lean more into the killer Ken, the Logan 2.0. And like I said, I'm here for y'all. I always love Ken. This episode, the first two, three minutes, it just brought me back to those old school vibes of succession and just being in the bullpen. As Ken is back in the office and everyone's cheering and applause, the crowd goes, wow, Ken, Ken, Ken. And something that the show has done, it's been two weeks since Logan has passed on. And we still feel his looming presence. And I love the shot where Ken's walking into the office again. Everyone's cheering him on. But we, we, we pan over to Logan's office. It's an empty chair. It's an empty office. Who's going to fill that void? And we'll talk about potentially Mr. Madsen filling that for the rest of the season, as well as Ken and that dynamic that we'll get into. But he's sitting down talking to his brother. And again, we have his A-team. And I don't want to skip over this because I'm a fan of Roman. But he's always been the, the, the non-serious, unprofessional, doesn't seem to have a path, doesn't really seem to fit into the business scheme of what they're trying to do with Waystar. But as we have really kind of went along in this show, especially last season and especially this season, he really wants to do his dad proud. He really wants to reserve Logan's legacy. And we'll talk about that a little bit later with the whole ATN getting to evolve into the deal. But I really appreciated the progression, the growth that we're seeing from Roman. And seeing him, number one, he's in the office before Ken. I mean, that's a rarity. Y'all remember when young Roman in season one was just kind of late and having his coat. I mean, he wasn't serious about his business. But again, I think that Roman is, not, is starting to realize Again, unfortunately, his dad saw some of that progression, but now he's really leaning into being serious. And because, again, going back to what was it, episode two of the season, when Logan tells him, I love y'all, but you're not serious people. I think Roman took that to heart. And we see that, again, not only from the last few episodes, but we definitely see that in tonight, especially when Luke was coming at their dad. So I really want to give a quick props to Roman. This is where things kind of shake down. The looming nature, and I'm going to I'll talk about, i put it in my notes later. I feel like we were, for any Star Wars fans, I feel like we were meeting the Emperor, you know, Palpatine. So we find out 
that Lucas is is kind of throwing in this curveball as far as major moves. He wants them to head over to uh, Norway. He has this list of names that will be on the chopping block, and we'll share that list a little bit later. But right now, the old guard is saying, well, if he's giving out names, he's making acquisitions, he's making moves, this is good for the deal. So this is a good thing, right? Or is it his way out of the deal? We'll get to Madsen later, but try to pay attention to Shiv in this episode because this goes back to when she told her brothers, don't screw me over, put that on dad, right? And, and she doesn't all, know all the moves they've been doing, but she's smart. She's reading the room. She knows what's going on. She notices the energy in the room and just notices her throughout this episode. Her brothers are constantly leaving her out of the loop. Ken flat out lies to her a little bit later in this episode, but Shiv... She is making to Ooh, number one when Frank and Carl are putting their socks on. I can't remember the exact line, but it was a mention of Logan not having his socks on or something like that in the plane and, and all that. So I think that was something to call back to, to Logan's death. But more importantly, you see Rome, he looks back in that same spot where his dad died. This is they're on the same plane. And it's something that is brought up a little bit later with Roman who is being insensitive about their father dying. But sometimes this show drops like big moments and they don't really and this and you guys know I love this show. But sometimes they drop big nuggets and they don't have like earnest payoffs. I thought and who knows they might bring it back up, but in this scene here with the siblings, they're all on an airplane. Shiv brings up that the news is starting to funnel out, that she found some news about their dad being out there. And Ken's acting stupid. He's like, oh, you know, it's it's part of the course. You know, our dad died. It's going to probably be the TMZs of the world really trying to put him in a negative light. And Rome doesn't make anything of it. He kind of looks at Shiv, and Shiv kind of makes sense. You can see she kind of makes a face. But I thought his decision of doing that, putting dad's name out there, obviously they don't know that. He told Hugo to put that bird out there, but I thought that that was, and again, it might be paid off later, but I thought that this would have been addressed in this episode. Like, wait a minute, this information that's being put out there, that's leaked out there, this is the conversation that Carolina and Hugo had with them. So again, I found it kind of odd, fully addressed that. And again, we still got four episodes left or five episodes left. So they might, that might come to light that Ken did that, especially now with Hugo not being in the mix. He might throw some people on the bus, Ken being one of them. But I don't know. Let me know if you guys felt that that moment should have been paid off a little bit further. Something to notice that Jerry and Carolina, even prior to Shiv giving, you know, Lucas the kind of like Jerry's good, Carolina's good, doesn't say anything about, you know, Frank or Carl who ends up making the list. But even prior to that, their demeanor, they're more calm, cool, and collective more so than Carl, Frank, and Hugo. They're like on their nerves and they're kind of like, ooh, what's going to happen? I'm going to, you know, get fired or whatnot. So it was something subtle, but it was something that I appreciated how calm they were versus how opposite Hugo and Carl and Frank were during the scene. So it was definitely something I appreciated. Yeah, my notes, it felt very like he was the emperor, that they were going to go see Palpatine, especially when they were on that lift. I really like how this show is using Lucas Manson as like this newer Logan-ish type of character where he's brass, he can be rude, he says some very insensitive things. Again, I love Alexander Skarsgård, and I really do wish, obviously we can't go back, but I really do wish that he was more involved in the show prior to Logan dying, especially with him you know, the energy that we got from him and when we did have those scenes with Logan. So I thought that he was just great. And again, I love how they set him up like the big bad. Let's talk about Connor. We He doesn't have a lot to do. And, and, and I always talk about it. I always feel like Connor, the, the show, I think it's somewhat intentional that he is kind of the forgotten son, but also think that the show really hasn't defined him besides just being the butt of the joke. See him calling Roman and lets them know that I guess Marsha is dealing with the funeral arrangements and she wants to put a kilt on Logan. And he's just calling them to let them to get the approval that he has full, you know, control over the situation, which is, again, that's the only, only thing that we get from him. This is the only scene that we see with Connor. And then a little bit later in the episode when he sends Roman a picture of Logan as they're preparing him for the funeral. Let me, I don't know, guys. I keep talking about, I don't know what the show's going to do with Connor. I don't know. I just feel like every time we check in with him is meant just to be kind of comedic use. And again, it is funny. And, you know, Alec plays it really well, but I just wish that there was a lot more to do with Connor. Uh, Palpatine himself, as you, I mean, <laughs> 
not being funny, but being funny. I mean, he has the hood on, right? I wish I should pull up a picture of Palpatine with his. For if you're not a Star Wars fan, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen now. But uh, for the breakdown, he comes out looking very Palpatine-ish with his hood on, and he's like, "Oh wow, you guys uh, brought the whole team, the whole squad." I think he throws in his little jabs and he says to Shiv, "Oh, if I hug you, would I get sued?" And I love their banter, and we'll talk about Shiv and, and Lucas a little bit later. Their chemistry on screen, because we really didn't see her interact with Manson so much last season. Their chemistry was off the charts. He says, you know, it's just me. Let's just go ahead and talk chop in the back, boys. And he's referring to Ken in Rome. And again, I don't want to beat a dead horse. It's Shiv. How many? I, I've lost count. How many times has Shiv been left out of the situation in this episode so far? Uh, airplane scene, um, the office scene. She wasn't CC'd on the email. She wasn't up to date about the dad being thrown on the bus. Um, and now we have it again. She was left out of the conversation. Keep tally, keep notes. Shiv's definitely keeping notes. I'd tell you that much. He wants to make his own name, right? He wants to get from his father's shadow and be his own man. I can't say the same about Rome. Rome is the only one right now because Lucas is playing bully ball right now. He's throwing jabs at them left and right. But Ken isn't falling for it. But notice that Rome is definitely falling for it as far as like the little jabs at his dad and, and, and all that stuff. And we'll get to the ATM of it all. But it was also a moment, too. I don't want to leave out a kind of a, a little small character beat that we get from Manson. I have, listen, all these characters have dad issues, right? That he lost his dad. Tells them that he his dad passed away in a very dark way in a bmw and oh you guys don't have any sympathy for poor lucas and he's and they're like oh we're sorry to hear about your dad it's like oh you know it's not a competition that's not a throwaway line that is he's constantly throughout this episode taking digs at them and he's making it more and more personal and trying to get under their skin and this is why i love this character because he's manipulative he is very much so doing these type of logan moves and taking these deep cuts at them and, you know, again, Ken doesn't take the bait, but Roman definitely does by the end of this episode. But again, I just wanted to point that out, that they all seem to have like daddy issues, but also him throwing in the dad thing of him losing his dad, then making it not a competition about who's lost their dads. I see you, Lucas. Again, Lucas, he does, he's doing it smart because he's making it personal, but then he can also throw in the business savvy. And the deal uh, at the table or before Logan died was 144, I believe, was the number that they had at hand. And then he kind of throws them off by saying, I'll buy everything for a dollar. And they, for a second there, again, Kendall was kind of cool, common collective, but Roman was, he was kind of rattled. You can see Roman was very rattled at this point in the episode and throughout this episode, for sure. I want ATN to be back on the table. So that, that was off the table. When, when Logan was alive, and we remember him in episode two, or episode three, or no, episode two before he died, we go from 144, to then he's saying bring in ATN into the situation, and then his new offer was 187. And the reason that's huge is because, for one, again, I bring back, Kim was liking that offer. Roman, not so much. for Roman, for different reasons, but the reason why I think it was poor, number one, Roman thought it was a bad idea, because this is, again, he wants to preserve his father's legacy. That's what his father built. His father wanted to keep ATN before he died, and he wants to keep that legacy going. But the other reason why it is important why Logan wanted to keep the you know news stations because we all know when you own the media, you control everything, uh, especially with the you know the the presidency that we know is going on, on the show. So it is a very important for their family to control the media. That's why Logan was so successful for many of his years. They have like a movie studio. They have theme parks. They have all these things going on. But when you control the media, you control everything because you control the narrative. You control the point of view and the perspective of how people view the president. But that's why it's so important for Manson to have that. He wants that control. He wants to be this guy over here to control the narrative. So Manson, man, he's a smart man. But also, again, going back to the kids being smart, that is huge to not give that up. Even though, again, their point of view, why Ken wasn't so like gun ho on the whole, like, yeah, we can give them ATM. We don't really want it. It's old news. You know, it's not good. But they also have Pierce, right? They, they still have their hands in the pie. But again, man, Manson, this guy is great. He's eating up these scenes right now, man. I'm really, if I were an actor, joining a show like this, 
that's been four seasons strong, winning Emmys, Brian Cox, Jeremy Strong, you know, this incredible cast. That just you're being dropped in. You know, it's essentially he was almost like a cameo in season three. And now he's obviously, you know, becoming a little bit more pivotal in the show. That's not an easy feat. He is being on this incredible show with these great actors with established characters and he's just dropped in there and he fits like a shoe he is so great in this show again i really do wish that we would have gotten more scenes with him and logan ogar is like good job they're impressed for this bump so shiv tells them after they you know try to get the deal done that you know manson wants to bring at atn back into the fold but speaking of ATN, she lets them know that presidential candidate uh, Macon, he is working in cahoots with ATN. And there's only two people that can make that decision. CEO Ken, COO Roman. And we all know from season three that that, that was Roman's guy. That's who Roman wanted to be the president. So this is another example of Shiv bringing to the light her brothers doing her dirty keeping her out of the loop he is just all right i'll put that there i'll put that there she's keeping tally y'all so that is not a, yet another example of them trying to get one over on shiv and she's just keeping inventory and she's going to get back on her brothers and i love this line i actually i wrote it down here but shiv says to him just get rid of it right it <laughs> if you want to have sentimental value she says just keep his sweater it's less racist there were so many lines that was so goddamn well written. I love this so much. But you have Tom and Greg linking up. And Tom wants to see that list. Tom wants to know who's on that list. More importantly, he's looking out for himself. We all know his protector is is no longer here. He wants to have Tom wants to throw Greg on the bus. If things don't look good, he tells Greg to just come over and you know I'll just feed you to some lines instead of for myself. The quad squad, aka the fam. And again, we talked about early Shiv's response. The, you know, don't want to get demonetized, but her response was just classic. He just kind of uninvites himself, unannounced to the table. And he the first thing he says to Lucas is like, Hey, hey, Lucas, you remember me? We at the wedding last year. We like made fun of some guy with some pants or something like that, out of style pants. And he's like, Sure, man. What's up? Uh, Lucas is, just, again, he's so great. He's so man. great at being kind of like a Logan character that he makes you uncomfortable. He makes you unsettled. He makes you question your own existence and he makes you feel so small. Lucas is, he finds out that Greg is actually part of their family. He's like, wait a minute. Wait, so you're related? Is this, are, are all you guys related? He's like, all right, you know, again, he's, he, I want you guys to, again, pay attention to Manson. He's controlling the whole thing tonight. He controlled every aspect of tonight's episode. He was the Logan of the situation. Give me your counter right now and then. His terms. Again, I, I want to remind y'all. Where are they at? They're on his land. They're in, they're in his den. He, he, he controlled this episode. Find the good parts, but a bad brand of it all, right? And he, oh man, he cuts these three so good like a knife. Or at least these two. Because he says something to the effect of... How ATN is old news, old people fighting over news is, is not good business, and he wants to revamp it. But when he said that, you notice that Shiv looked at him like, I agree with that, right? There was, again, their friendship, or maybe something even further, we'll see, kind of was cultivated in tonight's episode. So she liked what he was saying for sure. But then he says, because the boys are like, yeah, I don't know if you really know what you're buying. Yeah, I don't really know you know what you're doing. And he tells them that they are just, well, I think he was mostly talking to Roman and talking to, to Ken because Shiv wasn't really saying anything. He says, listen, you guys are just a tribute band. You're just the backup team. You're just the B team. And their response kind of caught both of them off guard. That line was so cold that you guys are just a tribute band. I love that. It's just a reminder that this is it is three on one right now, technically speaking, and he's holding his on. This again, this is a Logan type of character right now. He is just really bringing it to him. And I just loved every single second of it, especially again when Siobhan is just like, All right, I like this guy. He's He's saying some things that I like, but that whole you guys are just a tribute band was one of my favorite lines for sure. While every time Lucas was around her. She not ran away, but she did not want to be around him. Reasonably so. We find out why she doesn't want to be around him a little bit later. Lucas and Shiv having their one-on-one, -on -one, and he tries to get a beat from her, tries to get an idea if his 187 is moving the needle. 
and she kind of tells him, yeah, it's, it's, it's the conversation is open. Right. And, and I, again, I love their chemistry, man. They're doing some stuff behind Shiv's back. So this is the conversation at hand. Ken wants to blow up the deal, the whole damn deal, the whole kapoop. He doesn't, the ATN, the whole thing. He wants, he wants to run it. Him and his brother. He's like, man, we're doing good, man. I want to ride this ship. And you know, Lucas isn't a good fit. He will destroy. Listen, he knows. I think Kendall knows that Roman is kind of in his feelings, feeling, you know, that their dad's presence is not filled. He wants to preserve his legacy. I think that he can read that and sees that from his younger brother. So he plays that against them. Again, all these characters manipulate each other. He says, hey, man, he's going to ruin dad's legacy. He's going to ruin everything that dad has built. Kendo doesn't mean that because this whole show he's showing us. Oh, ATM, sure, get rid of it. He's showing us this whole episode that he doesn't care about his dad. Like I'm not saying he doesn't care about his dad. You know, obviously we saw that these last few episodes. But he he's he's in his own. He's he's on his high horse, man. He's been look at the first ep, the first scene of this episode. He's like, I'm the boss. I'm running this ship now. So he said he uses that against his younger brother because I would say Roman seems to be the only one that tends to kind of get easily swayed in most situations when, you know, he was doing his thing with his siblings and then his dad was able to rope him back in with not much pushback. Same thing happened last week when Roman was kind of on the fence about Ken being CEO, but then Ken was able to weasel his way into his brother being on his side. And the same thing happens here. He works his magic on his younger brother and his brother's like, yeah, you're saying stuff I want to hear that Lucas isn't right. We don't want to ruin dad's legacy. And he says, yeah, let's blow up this whole damn deal. So if I'm being honest with you all, I think this whole bond that him and Ken has had over these last few weeks is going to blow up in Ken's face. Again, y'all know how I feel about Ken. He's my boy. Right now, he's doing some things that uh, aren't, you know, it's, it's Logan things. Don't get me wrong. But what happened to Logan? He died in a bathroom by himself without his family around him. And Ken continued to be more and more like his father. I think mean, he's going to push away his family very much so like Logan did. Meanwhile, while this is happening and they're scheming to, to blow up this deal, you know what's going on during this time? That's Siobhan and Mr. Manson. And, you know, they're speaking privately and he wants her advice. And, you know, he, he gives her a little, little motivation, you know, you know, coke, right? And she plays it off. Lucas, again... He knows how to mix business with pleasure and does it in such a way that he makes people just kind of say things without them even realizing what they're saying. Because I don't I don't think Shiv would be this personal. We see her, he says, so tell me, Shiv, you know, this whole marriage situation and, and everything at hand. And she, I didn't think, she, I thought Shiv was going to be a Logan and be like, F off. I did some things. He hurt me. I hurt him. Heartbreak essentially was the thing at hand. That was just enough for him to open up to her. And he does. And I don't know if this is a story you would be sharing with people that you just really kind of met, <laughs> essentially. He broke up with his ex-girlfriend and he thought it would be funny to send her blood over and over and over again. And it's his ex-girlfriend and he wants Shiv's advice. Should I fire her? Should I lawyer it up and just pretend he say, she say and not get it out there? I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Siobhan, this is heavy stuff. This is ammunition. This is things that you can use against Manson because this is, this is information that I don't think you want to be sharing to anyone. Question I have for you all at home. Will Shiv use that against him at any point in time? Because that's some pretty, pretty big stuff you don't want out there. And we know Shiv, she threw her brother on the bus a couple seasons ago and put that ladder out there when they were beefing with him. I wonder if Shiv's going to use that in her back pocket. Now, obviously, she doesn't have any besides him telling her that. Like, she doesn't have a, a bottle of his blood or whatnot to prove it. But this because this is, a, a we talk about, I'm keep comparing him to Logan. And I don't think Logan would ever do that. So for, for Lucas to be telling her that really kind of points to, paints the picture to me that he really, he tells her in this scene, I like you. I think he means that. And I think he wants her to work for him. And, and also, too, I guess I didn't even really think about it till now. He could be making this up. He could be totally making this, pulling this out of his ass. He seems to play people. So I wonder if this was like a, again, I guess going back to the Logan comparison, him playing someone and just seeing their response. So let me know in the chat if Lucas was being honest, if he does, if he's been sending his ex-girlfriend blood. And if so, why would he tell Siobhan if he doesn't want her to be his like number two? 
Let me know what you guys think about that. While that's happening, Ken gets Greg involved and he wants Greg to tell the journalist that the vibes aren't going good and get that PR train going. So again, moves. Greg's like, yeah, I'm down. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I'm ready to make it happen. So let me know what you guys think about all that. Wrap up this episode. So at this point in the episode, it's the next morning yet again. Hey, Ken, um, there's what's going on? You, you read the news. There's some headlines out there saying that the vibes are not going well. The deal's not going well. And Ken flat out lies to his sister yet again in this episode. But Shiv, same time, Shiv doesn't tell him what she just previously learned. So she's giving it back. All right, you want to keep lying to me? All right, I got you, bro. Yeah, you. oh, so I heard you met with Manson last night. What did he say? Oh, nothing. He still wants to buy the deal. Uh, Shiv, you forgot to mention the blood and you forgot to mention the ex-girlfriend. You forgot to mention all the, the stuff you guys talked about. But I respect Shiv for that. And she has a brief conversation with her soon-to-be, I guess, ex-husband. And they're taking these weird shots at each other. I mean, Shiv is talking about his shoes and kicking rocks on my man's shoes. <laughs> Tom talks about her earlobes and flicks her earlobes. Shiv, at the last minute, says that she met with Manson and she was, she he's a handsome individual. Like, what is going on? <laughs> Whatever was going on, I was here for it. Probably my favorite scene. So as Ken and Rome have decided to blow up this deal, they're on their way to Palpatine on the lift. And then it was a small scene, but again, it just kind of shows that the whole pre-grieving was a bunch of BS. He he does miss his father. And again, we see that throughout this episode. He wants to keep his father's name and his legacy still going. But then Connor sends Rome a picture of their dad as they're prepping him for the funeral. He sends him that. And the reason I bring this up, and let me actually pull up the screenshot. The reason I bring that scene up is because he's going to meet with, they're about to meet with, with Lucas. And the fact that, and he they haven't had a proper time to grieve. I talked about that earlier. Again, Manson being so manipulative, the fact that he had the meeting two days after they lost their father, all this stuff is very purposeful. But Connor sends him that picture and it really throws him off. And we see that in this next scene. And by this next scene, this is probably... I love Roman. He's a great character, man. But as far as like emotional moments and like dramatic moments, this is probably one of my favorite scenes from Roman. It symbolizes all these characters right now, thinking that individually speaking and maybe collectively with the brothers that they're on top of the mountain, they're on a high, they're on the top of this mountain. And we know as an audience, they want to give him the news. They want to blow up the deal and they want to make it seem like it's Manson's fault. And they're talking about like this nonsense of like they have a movie going on and there's red flags, there's reshoots, it's going to be more than we expected and all this stuff. And then Ken comes in and say, you know, I wanted to let's slow down things. Let's let's slow it down. We got some uh, obligations we got to take care of. Luke is like, oh, OK, yeah. All right. That makes sense. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, we got a movie. Sure. All right. He knows what's going on. I really liked working with your dad. He might have been a prick but he knew how to handle his business, right? And then again, I just talked about what happened with uh, Roman a couple seconds ago. He was just reminding his dad is dead. Manson threw that in there, just like he did when they first were talking about their meeting about his dad dying and just dad's dying in general, top of mind. It throws them off. Rome is just like, our dad wasn't a prick, by the way. And I'd love that he kind of threw that in there and just kind of, again, hits that nail on the head, how he's still in his feelings and hasn't processed everything yet. But he tells him that, and I love Lucas. He called them what a boy band earlier or a tribute band. And now he tells them that your dad would have been so embarrassed of his two little boys trying to do business. And he tells them, oh, do I have to go to your to the old guard to actually do this and just throwing jabs after jabs after jabs and he poked the bear. I'm pretty sure when you're doing these type of negotiations, you, you're not supposed to, there's certain lines you can't cross and Roman crossed that. But I appreciate Roman for telling him about himself. I love this moment here, guys, because Roman finally confronts Lucas and tells him that he's been waiting for him. He's been waiting to say this this entire episode, but he's like, first off, our dad died two days ago, and you have us immediately coming out here to the retreat to do the business. So I love that he called Manson out for that. And again, Manson, he did that on purpose. We all know that. And then we see him tells him just he goes on and on and on, is laying it into him. And Manson's like, hey, man, cool it down, bro. I thought I didn't, I didn't think he was going to hit him because he's this is his game. This is his tactic to try to piss him off. He eventually says, hey, 
hate you and the deal is over and we see him walking away and i put in my notes here man that roman got personal and again i loved it i loved rome having that dramatic moment because we're always so used to seeing roman being quick on a foot having the jokes having some dark jokes by the way too we know that but he's always never we've never seen roman personally get that affected right so i just love him going to that moment and speaking his mind and telling him how he felt about himself uh, about manson right so I, I just thought that that scene was just perfect the 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 them being on the mountain it's just all of it was just a perfect scene to me and i and I, it's, it's probably one of my favorite scenes from the great roman that's on this show so let me know how y'all felt about that i thought it was it was a long time coming and i love that we finally got to saw because i've always been saying i figured it was going to come sooner rather than later and we got in tonight's episode which was just Kind of for me, the icing on the cake to really make this episode, you know, stand out to me. So they thought that they killed the deal, but then Frank gets the call and Manson tells them, again, we went from 144 to 187. We're up to 192. This is the deal that you can't, you know, a lot of people compare this show to The Godfather. I'm not going to do my terrible Michael Coleon, you know, type of impersonation, but this is a deal you can't refuse. This is a deal you can't refuse. 192, the deal's back on. You know, everyone's getting excited and happy. And even, you know, Roman Ken can't take up that deal. They, they would be idiots to not take that deal. So everyone's on a high. Everyone's celebrating, which brings us to this scene here. Tells Tom, go ahead and fire Sid with the new ATN. Hey, I saved your job, by the way, Tom. Thank me later. And by thanking me later, let's go grab, you want to grab some dinner? You want to go hang out and maybe uh, rekindle some things and see where things are at? I don't know. We'll see, Tom. Only does she tell that to Tom. And Tom's like, uh, 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 dinner? Uh, uh, uh sure. Uh, I don't know. Oh, hold, hold that thought, Tom. I got a phone call. Let's keep that. Just hold that. I'll get back to you. In the way she's, oh, hello. <laughs> it's Lucas. And what is... Freak McGeek, uh, send me your blood type of dude do here. He says, hey, can you take it? This dude's a weirdo. Her to take a picture of your brothers. I want to see their faces right now. Look at his face, by the way. I love Alexander Skarsgård. He stole this episode, man. He's so fantastic. And Siobhan, she does it, by the way. I don't want to leave that out. She does take a picture of her brothers, which to me, and she's smiling, laughing, giggling. They're in cahoots. Siobhan, Lucas, I'm not good at shipping characters' names. What, what do we call this? The Siobhan and Lucas uh, pairing. I don't even want to embarrass myself by throwing something stupid out there. That's why you guys are here watching live or in the comments. What do we call this group of Siobhan and Lucas? Put your put your comments in the comments for me now. But as we wrap up the episode, title. We got to get back to the title, Elliot. What's the name of this episode? It's The Kill List. And who was afraid of The Kill List? The Old Guard. Hey, goodbye. To Ray, who is on the screen now. We really didn't get much from hey, Ray. Who cares? You know, good luck on the job market. Ray's gone. Mark is gone. Hugo is gone. I think we all saw that coming. And Frank and Carl is gone as well. But you know who's still staying? You know who's uh who's still dancing at this party? Jerry's dancing. Jerry's still here. Carlina's still dancing. She's still here. By the way, they, they're pretty good at their jobs, especially Jerry stepping in fourth quarter when they, she had to step in as the intern CEO. So she did her thing. But also, don't forget, who told Manson that Jerry was good, Carolina was good, Siobhan. They're on the board. And then can't forget Tom. So bye, Ray. Bye, Mark. Bye, Hugo. Bye, Frank. Bye, Carl. What a great episode, y'all. This episode to me really showed me that Alexander Skarsgård is not uh, an actor that uh, doesn't get worried or scared to step up to the plate and to come into this fantastic show with these great actors and just fit like a shoe. He was great. He's my MVP. I asked up top, who was your favorite character in tonight's episode? Manson, Siobhan, and Roman. Those are my top three. Y'all know how I feel about Ken. He's great, but those three stole tonight's episode. Got to give a runner-up to my boy Greg as well, doing some some great comedic moments in this episode, but also looking out for us, but at the same time. So those are some standouts. I love the scene. I love every time Siobhan and Lucas shared some scenes tonight. The chemistry was fantastic. Just, um, 
just great stuff, man. This is another great episode of Succession. But we're going to wrap up the breakdown portion of the video, but we're going to continue to go live and take you guys' comments for those who are watching live. And for those watching the breakdown portion, come and join us live every Sunday night after the episode. We have a good time over here. So this is going to end the breakdown portion. Make sure to leave all your thoughts and tonight's episode in the comment section. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out all my contents on the channel now. Barry episode four, uh, three for season four. Um, Evil Dead Rise review, spoiler review of that. Bo is afraid, spoiler review. We got a lot of stuff on the channel. Check it out. I'll check you guys out on the next video. But.